and welcome back to another episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Now, I've been thinking, even though I said that I don't really want to do electronics videos anymore, I don't really want to abandon my fans either, so... I thought that whenever I have something video worthy to do an electronics video about, I will do one. And this just happens to be one of those occasions. So what I want to do is I want to reinstate my tube or valve amplifier. Because we've had a few upgrades to the room. Got a new carpet as you can see. So of course I had to move everything else so they could put the carpet in. And when I put my hi-fi system back together, this time I want to use it with my tube amplifier. And just to let you know, I have started working on the new show. I've got some scripts written, as you can see here. I won't show you too much of that, but it's unfinished work anyway. Also been designing some of the episode specific characters, as you can see here. in various different colours. And when I've got all the music done, I've got I've nearly done all the music that's gonna be on that show. So when that's all done I will start working on that show, you know, full time. But anyway, back to this. So what I want to do is I want to come up with some kind of power supply for this. Now, the thing is, because this is a tube amplifier, I just simply cannot plug this into a phone charger and expect it to work. I know that's what most things work on these days, but there are some things that do not work on 5 volts, and this is one of them. So, I want to make a high voltage power supply, and I've got quite a few transformers that I could use for that. And I also need to make a 12 volt supply for the filament, Although I have about 50,000 million transformers, I don't seem to have one that will do 12 volts at the kind of current I need, so... I mean, a transformer like this would provide the kind of voltage that I need for the filaments, but nowhere near enough current. So before we begin, let me explain the setup I've got here and how this is perfectly safe. So, I've got a switch here which goes to the mains, so I can switch the power on and off. And then that is going into this thing here with two outlets on it, and the two outlets are wired in series, instead of wired in parallel. So, the mains first will go through this bulb, and then into the transformer, and that's going to limit the current, so if I do something stupid, it will limit the current, the bulb will come on, and my transformer is less likely to go up in smoke, which wouldn't be the first time that's ever happened. Here I've got a transformer with nothing connected to it, and if I turn the power on, you can see nothing happens, although I can hear a very slight buzz coming from the transformer. So, now it's on, and I think the bulb might be glowing just a little tiny bit, but that's perfectly normal. Yeah, I can see it just a faintest hint of a glow from the filament there, but that's nothing to worry about. Like I said, that's perfectly normal for it to come on just a little tiny bit. Anyway, if I do something stupid, like short one of the outputs together and now turn the power on, you can tell we have a problem now. And if I short both the outputs, that will come on even brighter. Big problem. So remember, no problem, big problem. And just to show I'm not BSing you, let's disconnect this one, and let's disconnect this one. Ta da! I can even make a little spark. Well, let's have a little bit of a laugh. Let's see what this transformer does. So let's see what voltage we get out of it with no load. 
and it's 12 volts. All right, let's see how much the filaments pull this output down. I wasn't going to use this transformer anyway, but just out of curiosity, only 7 volts, although it's going up because the filaments are warming up. Yeah, but it is so puny. Oh, we do have a little bit of filament action. If my camera would focus. But yeah. Okay, so let's work on the high tension power supply. So I've got three transformers here, which are all possible candidates for the high voltage. And I hope that this camera is going to be able to see the meter's display, which I don't know why, but for some reason, every single camera I've had has never been able to see the LCD on a meter for some reason. Anyway, I'm going to turn that on, put it onto AC volts. Now, this transformer has two 35 volt windings back to back, which will give about 70 volts. With this transformer here, we've got a 24 volt winding, another 24 volt winding, a 14 volt winding and a 5 volt winding and on this transformer I don't know if you can see it but I've got two 15 volt windings back to back two 35 volt windings back to back a 22 volt winding and a 4.5 volt now that might not seem like much voltage but if we take one of these transformers and connect all its secondaries together in series we can get loads of voltage this one, with all its secondaries connected in series, will give us about 126 volts. This one will give us about 63. And this one will give us about 70. The thing is, you must get the phasing of the secondaries right, or you'll get a lower voltage than what you're expecting, and I'm going to show you that right now. Okay, and now I'm going to show you how to connect a transformer with all the outputs in series. So got this transformer here, and it is plugged in right now, but the power's off, so I'm perfectly safe. And you might have noticed that I've drawn a little arch connecting this pin here and this pin here. And there's another one with this pin here and this pin here. Another one with this pin here and this pin here. And finally, there's one connecting this pin here to this pin all the way over there. And each one of those arches represents one of the output windings and where they're connected. So, between these two pins here we get 24 volts. Between these two pins here we get another 24 volts. Between these two we get about 14 volts. And between this one and this one we get about 5. So let's just measure that on the meter and hopefully you'll be able to see it. This camera seems to have an incredible difficult time seeing the display on a meter. So, switch the power on. So, let's measure between this pin and this pin. And we've got about 5.2 volts. Between here and here. 23.9 approximately. Here and here, 20, about the same. And of course, here's our 14 volts, as you can see. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to connect this pin here and this pin here together. Then I'm going to measure the voltage. And if the phasing is right, we should have about 48 volts. All right, okay, I've soldered those together. So, let's turn the power on. And the current limiter light hasn't come on, so that's good. We haven't shorted anything out. So, let's have a look at the voltage. Hopefully my hands aren't getting in the way. And we have about 47 volts. So that's pretty much right where I expected. So now, I'll solder a couple of the others together. So, let's say, connect this one here and this one here together, which would be 48 plus 14, whatever that is, 
So that should give us around about 62 volts if this is all going good. Okay, so the two 24 volt windings and the 14 volt winding are in series. So we should get about 62 volts, and of course it would help if my meter was on AC. Okay, current light limiter. Current limiter is not lit up, so that's good. And let's see what we get. 61.6, well that's close enough. So the phasing is still right. So now, I'm going to connect the 5 volt winding, which should give us, let's see, we were getting like 61.8, something like that. So we should have about 66 volts when we, do, when we connect the 5 volt winding. So let's do that. Okay, so that's all the windings connected in series. So our output voltage is going to be between, our final output voltage is going to be between here and here. So, turn the power on. Let's see what we get. And, no, it's not. It is not 60, um, we're only getting 56 volts. Where we should be getting about 66. So that means that this time, we've connected one of the windings out of phase. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this wire here and instead of connecting it here, I'm going to connect it here and then we'll see what we get from that. Alright, so quick rewiring later. Let's see if we get our 65 volts now or whatever it was supposed to be. And look at that. So that's more what I was expecting. So there you go, that's how you connect up a transformer and what to do if you don't get as much voltage as what you're expecting. So now let's see what voltages we get out of our transformers. So let's turn this one on, see what it gives us. Alright, got about 115 volts there. Okay, so let's move over to the other transformer. I haven't put any wires on this one, so it's going to be a little bit more tricky to, to connect. And I really should have put a longer wire on this thing, but still. This one I said would give us about 65 volts with all the secondaries in series. So let's just check that. Let's connect between there and there. And get the probe to sit on there. Okay, 66.8, well that's close enough. And let's move that out of the way. So I can plug this one in. Really need one of those quick connect things that you know like a big Clive has, but still. Don't have one of those, so this is the way I'm going to have to do it. Alright, so let's turn this one on, see what we get from this transformer. And that's given us about, yeah, around about 73 volts. So let's see what kind of voltage we can expect when we rectify it. Now remember, this transformer gives us about 70 volts, so when we rectify that to DC, we have the peak voltage. That should be around 100 volts DC, so let's see what we get. And look at that, just over 100 volts. Now I want to power my tube amp on at least 170 volts, so yeah, this is below the voltage I need. So, let's see what happens if we use this transformer. Okay, the capacitors have been discharged. And we've now got the rectifier connected up to this transformer. And remember, this gave us about 115 volts. So let's see what we get when we rectify that to DC. And that's pretty good. We're getting about 161 volts. But anyway, 161 volts is not quite enough, so I think we're going to go with a doubler. Okay, so I've now built a voltage doubling rectifier. I didn't test this transformer on the full bridge rectifier because, well, 
Because the voltage that this one puts out is very similar to the one this one puts out, there wasn't really any need to. But let's see what 66 volts of AC becomes when we put it through a voltage doubler. And look at that. 187 volts. But we can go even higher than that because we're going to do it on this transformer next. So basically what we've got here are two half-wave rectifiers cascaded together which gives us twice the peak voltage from the transformer. Anyway, let's connect this to the big transformer and see what that gives us. Alright, so I've got the other transformer in, so this one is not doing anything. Now remember that this one gives us about 115 volts AC when I have all the secondaries in series, like I've got right now. So let's see what 115 volts AC becomes when we put it through the voltage doubler. And look at that, 322 volts. That's a lot higher than what I want. But this transformer has multiple windings, so yeah, I can just connect this up to a different voltage on the transformer and I'll have the voltage that I need. Well, that's the high voltage sorted out, but as for the low voltage supply for the filaments, I really don't know what to do. Do you ever have one of those moments when the answer just suddenly hits you in the face? Well, I've had one of those right now. Now, since this transformer has multiple outputs, I thought, what about I use the 15 volt winding to power the tubes, I mean, a couple of extra volts won't hurt them, and they are wired for 12 volts, so it's not that big of a difference. So, I've wired one of the 15 volt windings to the filaments, and at the moment we're only getting 11.9 volts, but that's because I still have the current limiter in the circuit. And I can use the rest of the transformer to provide the high voltage, even though I have all of these secondaries connected together, because all of these valves have indirectly heated cathodes, so the filaments, they're isolated. So let's just see what output voltage we're getting from this transformer. I want to make sure I don't shock myself on it. So at the moment this is giving us about 100 volts, so it's still pretty good. So we have power for the filaments and the high voltage. Okay, well I think it's about time I power this thing up and see if it works. So, I've got my transformer here, and I've made some improvements to the rectifier. As you may remember, I made a voltage doubling rectifier with puny little capacitors on it. Well, I've gone for some much bigger capacitors. I've also added an extra stage of filtering, using this transformer as a choke, and there's another capacitor here. And I've got the doubler on about 100 volts AC, so I'm going to turn this on and make sure that nothing weird happens and then I'm going to connect up speakers and an input and see if this thing can sing right so let's turn it on and see what happens okay voltage is about 230 something and climbing that might go down in a minute when the tubes warm up and yep okay so the tubes have warmed up and the circuit's now pulling current Okay, everything seems to be working. All the filaments have light up, so all the filaments have lit up, so that's good. But I can hear a very faint ringing coming out of the transformers, and I know that's not supposed to happen. But that might just be because I haven't got anything connected up, and you know, valves, they don't really like the input floating like that, so. So, yeah, let's connect this up to something and see if it works. What can I say? It's working! Just got a couple of crappy little speakers hooked up to it. I just got it connected up to the headphone output of my uh, tape deck. And we have chip tunes with that beautiful warm valve sound. It's a little bit 
hissy though. I don't know if you can hear that. If I put the camera right up close to the speaker, you might be able to hear that. Although I think that just might be the headphone output on this, actually. I don't think that's the amplifier doing that. So anyway, now I've got a nice little amplifier. I can rebuild my stereo system. Because I've got a lot of stuff to put back in that, you know, under there. I gotta tell you something. With the speakers apart like this, I mean, I can hear the arpeggio coming out of this speaker, the tune coming out of this speaker, but the bass, it sounds like it's coming through a speaker in the middle, yet there is no speaker in the middle. It's like, it's almost like there's a virtual speaker right there. I guess that's one of the beauties of valve sound. Anyway, before my camera battery completely dies on me, thought we would just measure some voltages. Now we know we're getting about 180 volts DC going into the circuit. So let's see what's actually coming out of the transformer. Let's see, um, see what's going into our rectifier here. First, what the transformer's giving us. Of course, it would help if it was on AC. Okay, we're getting about 87 volts. Let's see what we're getting going into the rectifier. 82 volts. Okay, it's a little lower than I thought, but that's absolutely fine. And let's test our filament voltage. Just get that on there. 12.16. That's bang on. Right on. That's right on. So anyway, I now got a nice valve amplifier for my hi-fi system. So now what I've got to do is just put all that back down there. And we'll be done. And finally, I'll leave you with some schematics. Now, please excuse the crudeness of these drawings, I didn't have time to draw them to scale or to paint them. But anyway, this is the power supply for the tube amplifier, and I might do a little modification to it by adding in that 4.5 volt winding just to squeeze a little bit more voltage out of it. And of course, here's the amplifier itself. So if you want to build it, now you've got the plans. But anyway, until next time, goodbye. So my battery's just about to go.